What is a coroutine? A coroutine, literally coming from coroutine, is something that allows two pieces of your code to run simultaneously. Before you start a coroutine, you can imagine your code running in one singular line. Now at any one point on this line, only one thing is happening at one time. But with a coroutine, that's where things change. We can imagine it like two diverging lines from this point where a coroutine starts. Now as you can see at any point on this, well let's just call it a timeline, two things are happening at the same time. And that's essentially what a coroutine is. It's honestly not too difficult once you begin to understand it. This is a feature in basically any area of programming you go to. For example, it's a feature in one of my favorite languages, Kotlin. But specifically here, I'm gonna show you how to implement that in Roblox. At this point, I hope you know the basics of Roblox programming, but if you don't, come back later when you understand it. As an illustration, I'll make a script that prints hello every one second and world every two seconds. Firstly, let me just make my function that prints hello every one second. So local function, hello function, and in here, we're going to want to do task.wait1 and then print hello. And then we're going to want to do the same thing for world. Obviously, change what's in here to two, change this to world function, and change it to print world. Sorry, and in here, we're going to do while true loops. So this happens continuously until we cancel the coroutine. I'll get to that later. Now at the moment, if I called hello function, I couldn't then call world function after it because this while loop inside hello function would block the thread, meaning that world function wouldn't be able to use it. But using a coroutine, I can run both of them simultaneously without either of them conflicting. So if I want to do that, let's make coroutines out of both of these functions. Local hello coroutine. I cannot spell, equals coroutine.create and then put the function name in, which is hello function. And then do the exact same thing for world function. But if I run this now, nothing will happen. This is because we need to call the coroutine as we would with a function, but it's a little bit different in the way that we do it. We use coroutine, not continue, coroutine.resume. And then we just pass hello coroutine to that. And then do the same for world coroutine. Now if we play, this should have the exact same thing that we want to happen. As you can see, hello every one second, world every two. And neither of them block each other. That gets boring quickly. <laughs> I've had enough of this hello world. So how do we stop the coroutines? Well, we just do coroutine.close and then the coroutine name. Now let's say I want these coroutines to run for five seconds before I cancel them. We can just wait on the main thread before we do that for five seconds and then close them. We don't have infinite hello world. What a shame. Okay, but now let's say you wanted to suspend the function of the coroutine from inside itself. Theoretically, if these variables were global, you could do the exact same thing from within the functions. But as we all have been told, global variables are a big no-no. So what we instead want to do is coroutine.yield. Now if we start it, it should only run once. Okay, cool. It's only run once. Coroutine.yield also has some other interesting functions. Hold up. Let me tell you about Honeygain, an app that you can use to get passive income, which you can receive with PayPal or crypto, literally just by running it. It works by allowing you to share your unused bandwidth, whether that's mobile data or normal, and you get paid for it. You can download on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, and iOS. But surely that must be sketchy, right? Nope. Honeygain only allows trusted third parties to use your network, such as businesses that are trying to access the internet in your location for purposes like research and circumvent geographical restrictions. While I'm not sponsored by Honeygain, if you use my affiliate link in the description, you'll get $5 for free and you'd also be supporting the channel. 
which I'd appreciate a lot. Let's get back to the video. Instead of thinking of it as stopping the coroutine, you can think of it as pausing it. Coroutine.yield can also be used to return a value. So for example, if I wanted to return hello, I could do local success result. And then if I want to get what the coroutine has returned, I can do print success result. To illustrate this extra functionality of yield, we're just going to focus on the hello function for the moment. So if we print the results of coroutine resume, we're going to get true, which is whether the coroutine was successful, which it was, and the result, which is hello. As you can see, that's the exact same thing I put in coroutine.yield. Not only can it suspend the execution of the coroutine, it can return results to the outside thread. When you want to return for the last time, just a normal Lua return statement works just as well. So if we repeat that, the execution will start from here and the result should be well. As you can see, all of that works. Now, other things you can check is coroutine dot is yieldable. And what this will mean is whether you can safely yield the coroutine. And obviously this will return as a boolean value. So I can just put if coroutine is yieldable, then coroutine yield. And then you can also check the status of the coroutine, which will either be dead, normal, running or suspended based on the state your coroutine is in. But as you can see, we need a thread, which is what a coroutine is, to put in here as an argument. So what we can do is coroutine.running, which will return the coroutine that is currently running. The status is running. And then there's one more part of the coroutine library that it isn't necessary to know, but it might also be helpful to know. So instead of doing this whole coroutine create, coroutine resume thing, what we can do is make a variable, I'm gonna call it, local hello coroutine function yeah i know i'm very creative with variable names and then coroutine dot wrap what this will do is whatever function you put in here it will create a coroutine out of it and it will resume that coroutine every time you call this function so if i just want to make a function and then copy everything over into here, I can get rid of this and I don't need that. So now if I print hello coroutine function and call it as I would a normal function, it acts in the same way. Now I've gone over everything you need to know in the coroutine library in Roblox. And if I have been able to help you with this video, you liking this video and subscribing to my channel would mean a lot to me. I wish you well on your development journey. Until next time.